Calandria, how was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was great. I definitely enjoyed the pre-Thanksgiving service with Pastor Cosby and the church family. Oh yeah, I, I went ahead and let Pastor Cosby's closing prayer be our family prayer for Thanksgiving food so we could just jump right into it. Okay. You get your ticket for today? Absolutely, I did. The process was seamless and easy and I registered the Eventbrite. Let's get it easier and easier. You ready to do this? Let's do this. Church family, I'm Philandria Wilson. And I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And it's time for your Avenue, Avenue News. News. For Bible study. That's right. Grab your Bible and catch us on the website, Facebook, YouTube, or our app this Wednesday at noon and 7 p.m. as we're led in a powerful time of study. The Wheeler Avenue Children's Ministry has non-stop ministry activities this fall. We are indeed Wheeler wherever. On Sundays, we invite all of our two-year-olds through fifth graders to join us for children's Sunday school classes. On Wednesdays, we invite all three-year-olds through fifth graders to join us for a Wana Bible study. Our classes are designed for each specific age group. We may be temporarily virtual, but our children are still learning and growing in the Lord. Don't let your child miss out on these biblical learning opportunities. Visit the Wheeler Avenue website for more information. All children, youth, and college students in need of academic assistance are invited to register for support via our tutoring ministry. The ministry has been blessed with gifted tutors who are willing to share their time to help students succeed. Please email tutor at rulerbc.org or visit the church website for more information. The youth ministry is looking for more volunteers to join our virtual and in-person team. There are opportunities to assist with Bible study, youth Sunday school, and our youth worship experience. If you're gifted and willing, you can work with The Way, the Wheeler Avenue Youth by visiting the events page on our website to sign up. Please contact Reverend Richard Boone IV at rboone at wheelerbc.org for more information. Join the HIV ministry Zoom meetings on the second Saturday of each month at noon. We provide education awareness for communities, spiritual and home care services for individuals and families living with HIV, and encouragement to stand against disparities affecting our communities. For more information, health awareness and support, please register on the church's website for meetings. You may contact Sister Dolores Stewart for additional information. We hope to see you soon. There's so much taking place here on the Avenue, and we hope that you're staying connected. For more information, join us on Flocknote, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or you can check out our app that you were supposed to download a couple weeks ago. I'm Philandria Wilson. And I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And this has been your Avenue, Avenue News. News. Don't forget, we are Wheeler wherever. Church family, it's time for worship. Good morning, church family. Come on, stand on your feet. Let's begin to bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Let's sing. Walks like a bird in a prison. I dwelt no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and the Son to me. Darkness of night 
we shall rejoice because we are free to rejoice. We are free to worship. We are free to bless his name. We are free to give him glory. We are free to honor him. We are free to thank him for all the wonderful and amazing things he has done. So with your freedom to praise, let us bless the Lord. With your freedom to give him glory, wave your hands and give thanks to the God of all glory and praise because the Lord is good. He is good. His mercy endures to all generations. Look around and look at each other how amazing you look. We are here because of the goodness of the Lord. So let us freely worship the Lord. Let us freely give him glory. This is the day the Lord has made. Thank you, Willa. It is now prayer time. You can stand if you want. You can take a seat if you want. You can take a knee if you want, whatever position you want to take. God is more interested in the position of your heart. So position your hearts so we can go to the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How wonderful, how majestic, how powerful, how high your name in all the earth. God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to see the light of another day. We thank you that you woke us up with a breath of love this morning that turned into life again and we were able to see brand new mercies not because we deserve it but because you love us and so we are grateful you have been our dwelling place all the days of our lives all our hands have needed all we have needed your hand has provided god you brought us safely thus far from a mighty long way and we are here to give you thanks we glorify your name, God, because you are all that we need and, and there is nothing that you can't do, nothing that you don't want to do for us. Some of us need you for one thing, God, and others of us need you for another thing. Some of us need you for multiple things, but that's okay because nothing is too hard for you. You hear all our praise at prayers at the same time and you can answer at the same time. God, we hasten to your throne now because we have need but before we ask you for anything God we're going to thank you for everything that you've done so far you've lifted us up you've kept us safe you've provided for us you have protected us you have been faithful to us you have comforted us you have kept us you have fed us you've kept the roof over our head you've given us shelter you've mended our broken hearts you have taken such good care of us, God, and we just pause now for a moment to say thank you. God, we bless your name because those, there are many of us who are grieving. At the top of that list, God, is Pastor, is Pastor Lawson and the Lawson family at the loss of, of Eric Lawson. And so we thank you that you are giving them comfort, God. But God, his name is at the top of the list, but it's not more important than any other name on the list because there are many who are grieving and we want you to do the same for those that you will do for Pastor Lawson. Comfort your people, God. Mend their broken hearts, God. Let them feel your presence and let your, your presence be comforting to them. You promise never to leave us nor forsake us and know in any situation, uh, we know that you are always there for us. God, we ask your prayers now for those who are who are sick and in need of healing we are aware now that there is yet another strand of the COVID-19 virus God but not even that is too hard for you and so we ask that you will continue to protect us God we know that you're protecting us because as the numbers are rising in other places uh, uh, the, 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 our civic leaders have said that the numbers are lower even right here in Houston so we know that you are watching over us and we know that you are providing for us and we know that you are healing you are doing something with this COVID virus and we thank you God, some are in need of finances today. We, are, we know that you are provided so you can take care of those. And we thank you. God, there are relationships that need mending, God, in this time of holiday season. Some things are just not going well in families, but we know that's not too hard for you either, God. 
So we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you will do. God, there are names on, on the, the list at Wheeler Avenue, the board of people who are asking for this thing or that. We don't know all they are, but you know what they are. And so we just thank you for taking care of everything. God, we just thank you. We thank you for taking such good care of us. We thank you that we are able to dwell in this cathedral. And for everything that we have asked, we won't wait until we see it. We won't wait till COVID is done. We won't wait till we see the money in the bank. We won't wait till we see the job. We won't wait till, till, till racism is over. We won't wait for it, God. We will shout right now because we know that you are prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And we know that because we've asked that you have heard and that you will help. God, Pastor Priest, that this morning you will help your people. So God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we do it all in the blessed name of Jesus. With thanksgiving, we say hallelujah and we say amen. Oh, yes, God, we believe you, Jesus. There is nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Your name is a strong tower, oh, God, that we can run in and be safe. Hallelujah. Come on, baby. Let's sing it. Have faith. Oh,
Our scripture reading for this morning will be coming from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the New International Version. And the Bible says, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. When all the Israelites saw the fire coming down and the glory of the Lord above the temple, they knelt on the pavement with their faces to the ground and they worshiped and gave thanks to the Lord saying, he is good, his love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And king Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 head of cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and all the people dedicated the temple of God. The priests took their positions, as did the Levites with the Lord's musical instruments, which King David had made for praising the Lord, which were used when he gave thanks, saying, his love endures forever. Opposite the Levites, the priests blew their trumpets and all the Israelites were standing. Solomon consecrated the middle part of the courtyard in front of the, up front of the temple of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the fellowship offerings because the bronze altar he had made could not hold the burnt offerings, the grain offerings and the fat portions. So Solomon observed the festival at the time for seven days and all Israel with him, a vast assembly, people from Lebo Hamid to the Wadi of Egypt. On the eighth day, they held an assembly for they had celebrated the dedication of the Lord for seven days and the festival for seven days more. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people to their homes, joyful and glad and heart for the good things the Lord had done for David and Solomon and for his people of Israel. To God be the glory for God's holy word. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, were you sad for this morning's hymn? Oh, 
and it's all in that great name hallelujah that name that is above every name demons tremble at that name power in that name hallelujah Woo! i love that name this morning anybody love that name this morning Whatever I claim, Lord Jesus, whatsoever I need is in your name. It's all in your name, Lord. Whatever I claim, Lord Jesus, whatsoever. Whatever I claim. 
If you've ever called on the name of Jesus and got a prayer answered, why don't you bless the name of the Lord Jesus? We've come to celebrate, to lift high, to worship, to bless that great name. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, that name is to be praised. And we've come to praise, honor, and worship the one true living God. Hallelujah. And thanks be to God. Listen, I am delighted on this Sunday to welcome special guests who may be present with us. You may be seated. If this is your very first time, I'll ask that you would stand. We may have some guests who are traveling to Houston for family for Thanksgiving. If you're a first time visitor to Wheeler Avenue, thank God for you, my sisters, my brothers. God be praised for each of you. Come on, thank God for all of the first time friends who are present in the cathedral with us on this Lord's Day. We honor you and thank God for your presence among us. You may be seated. We likewise want to thank God for all of you who worship with us for the very first time online. If this is your first time viewing us, we pray that you would let us know so that we can hear from you and respond to you. We want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to know you to know that we are delighted that you are choosing to worship with us even virtually on this Lord's Day. We know that we are Wheeler wherever, so we thank God for the entire tip of family of faith that is streaming in worship with us this day. And for those of you who are present in worship, if this is your very first time, we pray that it is a, a magnificent time of worship. Even as you engage in this experience of worship, we pray that you're being blessed by it. We pray that you would take your time leaving, but hurry up and come on back whenever God gives you opportunity. We have a special selection for all of our first-time friends. We're going to serenade you just so you know that we welcome you, our sisters. We welcome you, our brothers, to the avenue. Come on, Wheeler family. Won't you just wave at somebody across the cathedral that you haven't seen in a long time and say it's good to see you. Oh, we welcome you. To Wheeler. Oh, we represent our God. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, you could have gone anywhere. Oh, but we're so glad that you came here. And we welcome you. We welcome you. To the avenue. Come on, everybody, say welcome. Come on and put your hands together and welcome the presence of the Lord. We welcome you to magnify and praise His holy name. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, we got you over here, say welcome. Oh. church and what a joy it is for us to do just that we're certainly excited that God has given us one more chance one more opportunity to gather together as the people of God somebody ought to thank God for the fourth Sunday of November and for the privilege of worship that we now engage I'm grateful to God for all of you who gathers in the sanctuary of the Cathedral of the Lord uh, at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and for all those who are in the cyber sanctuary all around the world wherever you may be we thank God for you and we pray God's blessings upon you and we certainly echo the sentiments of the Reverend Alexander E.M. Johnson we welcome you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church how was Thanksgiving was it all right how was Thanksgiving it was good how many ate too much you ate too much and you know you did 
Okay, all right, not too bad. How many just went back for thirds? You didn't go for the fourth. You just did th three? Okay, God bless you. How many still sleepy now? You still sleepy? Lord, have mercy. I mean, you took your hand up real fast when I said you're sleepy. All right, we got to wake you up. We got to wake you up. We got to do something to wake you up. We're so glad to see you. Glad that you had a good Thanksgiving. For those who didn't, we're praying that the days will get better and that our God will continue to shower you with the favor of the Lord. We are certainly grateful to see you today as we enter a brand new season. We're in the Advent season now, and the Advent season for the Christian church helps us to look forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into our world. And so we are intentionally uh, sing, uh, singing about and talking about uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into each of our our lives and the way he makes his presence known in our lives and to God be the glory for the advent the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and for these next few weeks as we anticipate Christmas we'll be celebrating Jesus all the way through anybody love to talk about Jesus and celebrate Jesus he's worthy I tell you and we're looking forward to that celebration as the days continue to pass. Listen, I am excited about uh, those of you who join us for prayer each and every Wednesday morning. There were 2,397 of you who called in for prayer this past Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. We're always seeking to keep our number above 2021, and you have done that with regularity over these past several weeks and months, so thank you so much. You'll see on the screen, if not now, in just a few minutes, the new prayer call. Now, there it is, the new prayer call line, and we hope that you will, uh, if you've not yet jotted it down or taken a picture of it, if you are not familiar with it, and you've not put it in your favorite, so you can just dial in quickly every Wednesday morning, please do that, and at 6 a.m., we'll be together in prayer. And then, of course, at 6 p.m., we'll be back together as Dr. Barnett and the prayer ministry lead us in our 6 p.m. time of conversation with the Creator. And so I hope that you will share with us in prayer at 6 and 6 this coming Wednesday, and then Bible study at noon and 7 p.m. It will be live at noon in the virtual space and then re re replayed at 7. And I hope that you will share with us in Bible study as we begin our conversation regarding Advent in Bible study this coming Wednesday and for the next three Wednesdays thereafter, two Wednesdays after this Wednesday. There are a lot of things going on at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and we want you to be mindful of them uh, so that we can continue to carry out ministry with excellence here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm just, uh, how many folk are here still here from out of town? You came in from out of town, and you're still here? Let me see your hands, wave them at, the, okay, so good to see you. We're so grateful that you've come to be a part of the Wheeler Avenue experience today. We praise God for you. And we pray that you'll have safe passage back to your destinations. Our in -law, my in-laws are in town, as they are often in town, and they came in for Thanksgiving. And I want to take just a per point of personal privilege today. Today is their 51st wedding anniversary, and we thank God for Brother and Sister Ben and Harriet Kane. 51 years today, and we thank God for them. They, like most of us, if not all of us, were quarantined a year ago as they celebrated their 50th, but they got out. They broke out for the 51st, and they came down here to hang out with us. And uh, I want you to be in prayer for my mother-in-law. Last night while she was helping my wife put up Christmas decorations, she took a fall in our home, and so she's not doing well. So she didn't come to church today. They didn't come to church today, but Ben did come, and I'm so grateful that he is here. So please pray for Sister Harriet Kane, but celebrate with Brother Ben and Sister Harriet as they celebrate 51 years today. God bless you. Thank God for you. Amen. Listen, it's offering time in the Lord's church. It's offering time in the Lord's church, and we're excited about it. I thought we were excited about it. That was really kind of weak. There we go. Okay, just making sure. Just making sure. We're excited about giving unto God because God has given everything unto us. And we want to return now a portion of what God has given to us as we honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings, with our gifts to missions and mercy, our gifts uh, to the building effort, all of which come from glad and cheerful hearts and grateful hearts because God has been so generous to us, so good to us, and we want to obey his word that tells us to bring the tithe into the storehouse. And then we want to go beyond the minimum requirement to give an offering unto the Lord. And we likewise give our gifts to missions and mercy. I mentioned in Wednesday night worship uh, that your gifts to missions and mercy helped us to feed 690 homeless individuals who came by last Wednesday. And we're so grateful that you continue to help us to do that. 
and then we're giving to the building effort as we continue to uh, finish the work that was begun here at Wheeler Avenue for this expansion of our campus, and we're certainly grateful for it, and we are thankful to you for your participation in this work. As we get ready to, to give, hope you have your devices ready, many of you. Uh, have been so faithful to give through those devices over the last year, and I thank you so much for that. The last year and a half, nearly two years, and those of you who'd like to give uh, your gifts personally, we will have our uh, chairman of deacons or his designee in the atrium immediately following worship so that you might give uh, in the offering basket as he stands there waiting for your, for your presence. Let's pray to God now as we thank God for these gifts. Gracious God, how we love you and praise you and thank you for your goodness and your grace toward us. We thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life. We thank you that you keep on doing great things for us, whereof we are glad. This day we give you praise for the privilege of giving back to you a portion of what you have given to us. You've been so kind and so faithful and so generous to us. We do not take your blessings for granted. We recognize that we don't deserve any of your blessings. So we thank you that we have the opportunity to participate with you in the kingdom building process as we bring our tithes and offerings to this, your church. Now, okay, oh God, will you receive these gifts from our hands? Will you consecrate them? Will you multiply them that they might be expanded to ensure that the kingdom of God is, is come in the earth as it is in heaven? We thank you for victory in our finances, and we pray that no one will lack as a consequence of what they give. And we pray this prayer in the strong and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all who agree said amen and praise the Lord. Listen, as we give, I want you to help me thank God for our staff, our team that makes the Lord's house look so beautiful. Thank God for all these wonderful decorations and for the way that they put things together here in the Lord's church. I mentioned to you Wednesday that Pastor Lawson's son, Eric, went home to be with the Lord. If you hadn't known that, we want you to know that his son is now resting with the Lord. I want you to pray for the Lawson family. They were in the first service today, but please be in prayer for them as they will funeralize Eric Lawson here at the church on the, on the 7th of this month. That is next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, December 7th, we'll celebrate Eric Lawson's life, and we thank God for that. Now pray for his father and for his sisters, that God will strengthen them during this time of bereavement. Will you do that? Okay, just making sure I'm not talking to myself. I'm just making sure. God bless you. Receive the music ministry as they prepare us for the word of God. And he is my own. He is my God. Thank you. Lord of all. Hey, 
you know he's faithful. He will not change. Don't give up. Step on the word. Live on the word. Stay strong. When my heart fails, when my strength fails, I can call on his name. God will. Don't give up. Don't give up. Bring me up. People said amen, 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 amen. Yes, Lord. How many know we serve an awesome God? Anybody know it for sure? We serve an awesome God. playlists on your phones, on your devices. You have playlists. I have several playlists on my devices. And one of my devices, one of my playlists is entitled Morning Worship. Morning Worship. And this is a song that greets me every single day of my life. It's the first song that I listen to every single day because I need to be reminded of just how awesome God is every day. Yeah. Yeah, 
I was having church on the way to church today. Anybody ever have church on the way to church? And that song just blessed us. Matthew and I were the only two in the car, and we were just talking and singing about how awesome our God is. Whenever you get down in the dumps and you get frustrated, I want you to just remember you got an awesome God. Come on, I need you to remember you got an awesome God. In Him there is no failure. You've got an awesome God. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. You've got an awesome God. There is nobody like Him. None can compare to Him in all of the earth. You've got an awesome God. He's not like your best friend. He's not like your boo or your bae. He's God all by Himself. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth forth His handiwork. I need you to know you've got an awesome God. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. You've got an awesome God. You've got an awesome God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, music ministry. Thank you, choir. Thank you so much for reminding us that we serve an awesome God. I want you to go through your week telling yourself God is awesome. God is awesome. It'll make you have a different perspective on some of the stuff you have to go through each and every day. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may as well rejoice in the Lord. turn our attention to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. The Reverend Boone has been kind enough to read for us verses 1 through 10. I want us to pick up at verse 11. I'm just going to read verses 11 and 12, but we'll go all the way through to verse 18 with the message. But I want us to look at verses 11 and 12 now. But keep your Bibles open or at least make sure you refer to the scriptures after worship so that you can hear or see or read how this entire chapter unfolds. Second Chronicles chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. Oh, I hear you over there. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, yeah. Sing it. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from the heaven of with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Come on, everybody sing it if you know it. Our God. From heaven above, with wisdom, with power and love. One last time, everybody, everybody, our God. Let me hear it sing, ring, ring. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Please, please. 
everybody, our God. Second Chronicles chapter 7, Old Testament book of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11 reads like this from the New International Version. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. Stop right there, that's enough. Praise God for his holy word. I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. I wanna talk simply from the subject, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. Um, it's my turn. Um, for, for the last couple of weeks, we've been investigating Second Chronicles chapters five and six. Since the second Sunday, when we looked at chapter five, we've seen some things about what was going on. We've experienced some things. We've learned some things about how significantly Solomon took the preparation and presentation of the Lord's temple. In chapter six, we learned that he dedicated that temple unto the Lord and consecrated the people as they prepared to worship the Lord in that place. We sought to explore, investigate what happened when that temple was built for the glory of God. And when we found out in chapter five that all the furnishings had been placed there, that David, Solomon's father, had instructed him to make sure you use the best furnishings for that place. Don't cut any corners, don't cut back. I want you to make sure that the Lord's house is outfitted with excellence and opulence and elegance, even extravagance. He made sure that that house was beautifully arrayed and that house, because it was supposed to be the Lord's house, was made in excellence. Hear it again now. Excellence, extravagance, opulence, even elegance was the order of the day for the Lord's house. The only problem was with all of its elegance and opulence and extravagance, the house was still lacking the presence of the living God. And so Solomon told all of the leaders, all of the people, let's make sure when we go into this beautiful house, we usher in the presence of the living God. That presence is manifested by the Ark of the Covenant, a little box that was to be the symbol of the presence of God among the people of God. And so in chapter 5, we found out that the presence of the Lord was taken into that place. And then in chapter 6, Solomon made it clear that if we're in his presence, we may as well offer some prayers because we recognize God to be a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God while we're in the temple, in the presence of the Lord. Let's lift up our prayers. And so he prays an extensive prayer. Were you here last week? Did you, did you hear about it? That extended prayer from verse 12 to verse 42 is asking God, beseeching God, begging God to ensure that everything that the people will need when they come into that place will be available to them. And so he prays. And when he prays, he he asks that God's eyes would be open toward that place. 
He asks that God's ears would be attentive to all the prayers that are prayed in that place. He says, if they sin, please forgive. He says, if their enemies try to take over them, please help them to have vindication from their enemies. He prays and he prays and he prays this extended prayer. And then he says, arise, O Lord, and take your rest. I need you to operate in this space. I want you to be in this place so that the people of God can feel the presence of God as they pray big prayers unto God. He says we got to pray big prayers because we got big needs. But the good thing is we got a big God. We call him awesome. We call him perfect in all of his ways. We've got a God who can handle our big needs because he's a big God. And no matter how big our prayers is, our God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And so in chapter 5, we get the presence of the Lord. In chapter 6, we hear the prayers of the Lord. And all that we have heard, the only person who's been doing the talking with the exception of the people when they were praising, the only person doing the majority of the talking is King Solomon. King Solomon was talking all the way through chapter 5. King Solomon was talking all the way through chapter 6. But by the time you get to chapter 7, it's as if God said, <clears throat> let me clear my throat because um, it's my turn. Mm. God says, I've got some talking I need to do. God says, I've got some things I need to say. And so when you get to chapter 7, it is the Lord speaking to the people of God, especially to Solomon, the king of the people of God, and letting them know that he's heard their prayers and he's responding in kind. Now, child of God, I don't know how you feel about it, but it blesses me to know that God does not turn a deaf ear to the cries of his people but God is in tune and in touch with all of us who make our petitions known unto God and so when you get to chapter 7 God decides to respond and I love the way God responds some of it is verbal some of it is nonverbal but all of it communicates to the people that God is on their side can I give it to you again some of it is verbal some of it is nonverbal verbal but all of it communicates that God is on their side let me give it to you a third time because somebody needs to hear that for your own purposes today sometimes God communicates verbally sometimes God communicates non-verbally but all of it is to let you know God is on your side may I encourage you on this Sunday afternoon and remind you afresh that God is on your side and so when the dedication of the temple is completed, the Bible says in, first, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 at verse 1 that God decides to respond. Now watch how God responds. Two things I raise for your consideration and we'll be done with the message. Just two things today. And the first thing that we recognize when God responds is the dramatic presentation. Mm. The dramatic presentation. I've been telling this church for years that our God has as a flair for the dramatic. Yeah, tell somebody it's not just you. Yeah, our God has a flair for the dramatic. God knows how to be dramatic. And in verses 1 and 2 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, God shows his dramatic side. God makes sure that even in his nonverbal communication that the people know he is responding to the prayer that Solomon has prayed. Watch what happens in verse 1 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Your Bible says after Solomon finished praying, Praying his prayer, watch this, fire came down from heaven. Oh, man. Oh, I said that after Solomon finished praying his prayer, here's how God responded. Fire came down from heaven. God said, listen, let me show off a little bit and prove to you that I can do the amazing and the phenomenal in the midst of your ordinariness of life. He says, if you have enough confidence in me to pray these prayers and to believe me for great things, I'm going to show you how much power I have to do the amazing in your midst. Fire 
came down from heaven. It is reminiscent, child of God, of what happens in Leviticus chapter 9 when the fire of God fell. The fire of God fell in Leviticus chapter 9 after Moses and Aaron had been in the tabernacle communing with God. They came out to bless the people of God. And when they came out to bless the people of God, fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifices on the altar. Okay, after that was ha had happened, you need to check out 1 Kings chapter 18 because in 1 Kings chapter 18, oh, Elijah is making sure that all the prophets of Baal understand that God is the amazing God for whom nothing shall be called impossible. They had called on their idol gods all day long and their idols did not respond. And oh, Elijah said, wait a minute, let me call on my God and show you what my God is able to do. And then to make it more dramatic, he told them to put some water on the altar, to drench it, to pour as much water as you can find on the altar. He wanted to make sure that the stones on the altar were completely drenched. He wanted to make sure that the wood on the altar was completely drenched because when God shows his power, there is absolutely nothing that can be that can withstand the power of the living God. And then after the altar was drenched, oh, Elijah said, God, I need you to prove to all these doubters and disbelievers, I need you to prove to all these haters that you're still the God who can do anything you choose to do. And the Bible says that after he called on God, fire came down from heaven and completely, and completely consumed the drenched altar. I want you to know that every now and then, God will send fire down from heaven to show you that he is in complete control. Okay, y'all remember Acts chapter 2? It was on the day of Pentecost when they were all in one place on one accord. Suddenly, there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then, your Bible says they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and cloven tongues of fire sat on every one of them. Oh, child of God, may I I please tell you that when the fire of God falls, you might be able to do stuff you never thought you could possibly do, and God will show you that he is in complete control in every situation of your life. Somebody need to ask God for the fire. For the fire. For the fire. Oh, oh Jeremiah said, listen here. I told Sarah I wasn't going to tell nobody. I got tired of preaching and nobody was listening to me. And just as soon as I got ready to sit down and not do anything else, I felt something like fire shut up in my bones and I couldn't keep it to myself. So the fire of God falls. And that's just verse one. The dramatic presentation is not done yet. Because after the fire of God falls, then the glory of God fills the whole temple. Oh, child of God, you want to have church like this. This is the kind of church you want to have. The glory of God fills the entire temple. Watch, watch, brothers and sisters, verse 1b. And then verse 2 says that the glory of God was so present in that place, that the glory of God so filled that place that the priest couldn't even enter into the temple. It is reminiscent, isn't it, of chapter 5 at verse 14. For in chapter 5, verse 14, the glory of God was so full in that house that your Bible said the priests couldn't even minister. They couldn't even do the jobs they were supposed to do because when God's glory fills the house, he will change the order of worship. When God's glory fills the house, you can't do the stuff you were supposed to be doing. When God's glory gets a hold to you, it'll stop you from singing in mid-song. I heard your Sister Willie, she was trying to sing her song earlier, and the glory of God so overwhelmed her, she couldn't even keep singing. The glory of the Lord. Okay. Y'all remember Isaiah chapter 6? It was in the year that King Uzziah died. Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord seated on his throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And then the seraphim started calling out to one another. They said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his 
glory, oh, the glory of the Lord is the weight of the Lord. It's the reputation of the Lord. It's when God begins to reveal himself to everybody who's been sitting around wondering if God was really all that to all talk about. And somebody in here can testify, I've been in the presence of the Lord. When the glory filled the house, I couldn't even get my thoughts together. I couldn't even contain myself. Couldn't even keep my composure because the glory of the And when the fire of God fell and the glory of God filled that house, the Bible says the people of God started praising him. You got to catch the praise of God. Oh, when the fire falls and the glory fills the house, somebody who knows something about what God is able to do, you can't help yourself. All you can do is praise his holy name. I'm in your Bible, I'm at verse 3 now, because verse 3 says that when they experienced the fire, when they experienced the glory, they fell down on their knees, and when they fell down on their knees, they began to worship God, and then the New International Version says they gave thanks to God. King James Version says they praised Him. They worshiped and praised God. Okay, let me get this again. When, when the fire fell and the glory filled the house, your Bible says they immediately fell down on the pavement and they began to worship God and praise God. And this is what they said. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Yes, Lord. Woo. The Bible says that when the glory filled the house after the fire had fallen, all they could do was bow down. That word worship is shaka in the Hebrew. It means to depress oneself. It means to fall down, prostrate before God. And then they gave thanks or they praised God. That word is yada. It means to get up and all you can do is say thank you. Do you see what happened when it happened? The Bible says that after the fire fell and the glory filled the room, they laid prostrate. They worshiped God. And then they got up and thanked God, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. May I suggest that every time the glory of the Lord fills this house and the fire of God falls down in this place, that with this ought be our recurring response. Fall down and worship him. And after you've gotten so overwhelmed, get up and tell him thank you. Is there anybody in here who still got some thank you left after Thursday? I need to find somebody in here who can help me praise God on this Sunday afternoon because you know he's good and his mercy endures forever. Every time you come into the cathedral, there ought to be an interplay between falling down and worshiping and getting up and telling him thank you. Falling down and worshiping, getting up and telling him thank you. Where are you in the midst of this right now? Are you down there worshiping or are you up here thanking God? Either way, everything that hath breath ought to praise the Lord. He's good. I said he's good. Even if your times aren't good right now, he's still good. Even if you don't like what you're dealing with right now, he's still good. Even if your heart is broken right now, he's still good. Can I find 12 people in every section who will help me celebrate the fact that we serve a God who is good? So now they're praising the Lord, they're worshiping the Lord. And it happens not just that day, but throughout the next several days. I, I, I didn't read all of the verses that Reverend Boone read, but if you, kept, if you were listening to him, you heard him say that they had a festival, a celebration. They were just thanking God for the next 14 days or so because God had just been that good. They just began to celebrate all throughout that season because God had been just that good. Is there anybody in here who knows that every now and then you ought to have an extended season of celebration? 
I love this time of the year because we just party all through the end of the year. From Thanksgiving to Christmas, you're just giving thanks. You're just telling God, thank you. You're just celebrating that Jesus came into your world. And somebody in here ought to just shake off the depression, shake off the gloom, shake off the frustration, shake off the anger issue, shake off the disappointment, shake off everything that's had you bound and begin to give glory to a God who is still most worthy of praise. came into the temple, your Bible says that the fire fell and that the glory of the Lord filled the house. That's the weight of God. God started throwing his weight around. And then the people praised God. Praise and worship was the order of the day. That was the dramatic presentation. But can I push it just a bit farther and I'll be out of your way? Because not only does chapter 7 reveal to us the dramatic presentation, but then chapter 7 reveals to us the emphatic proclamation. Yeah, there's a divine presentation, there's a, a dramatic presentation of God. But then there is the, 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 the em emphatic proclamation of God. God finally begins to speak verbally. Oh, he's done enough speaking with fire and glory. But now he says, I got something to say. Solomon, you've been talking since chapter 5, and I've enjoyed your conversation, but it's my turn. Now, I know some of us thought when I announced the subject of the message that it was your turn for a personal blessing. But every now and then, you ought to hear God say, it's my turn to speak into your situation so that you know that one word from me will change the trajectory of your life. I need seven people up in there who can testify that one word from God can literally transform my life. I need another three people right here who can testify if I get a word from the Lord, it'll change how I think. It'll change how I walk. It'll change how I interact with people. One word from the Lord. I, uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. We were talking about that passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 when uh, Paul is talking about the thorn in his flesh. And Paul is talking that whole chapter. And it is not until later on in the chapter that you get a line of red writing in the verse. And that is the only time in the whole chapter when the Lord Jesus speaks. And you know what he says? Because Paul had asked God to take the thorn away. He had asked him three times to take the thorn away. And this is what God said in response. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's all God said, the whole verse. That's all God said, the whole chapter. But that one word from the Lord enabled Paul to respond like this. I'll just glory in my infirmities. I'll just get happy even when I got a thorn in the flesh because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Is there anybody in here who can help me celebrate the fact that if God starts speaking, something's going to shift? And so God starts speaking. He starts speaking in verse 12. And this is the first thing that God says. And I'll be honest, I was in my study, my office last night, and when I read this and processed it, I got happy all by myself. I hope this does for you the same thing it did for me. Because I had to have a praise break all by myself because the verse says in verse 12 when God starts speaking I have heard your prayer that's all I got for you right now that's all I got that's all I got okay yeah that's about 50, 50 people Wait, 100 people uh, okay see this blesses me to know that my prayer has been heard because when I pray, I don't want my prayers to fall on deaf ears. I don't want my prayers to just hit the ceiling and bounce right back down. I need to know that there's a God who's on my side who heard me. And I've been deputized on this fourth Sunday of November to tell somebody in no uncertain terms, he heard you. 
It may not shout you like it shouted me, but I'm about to get happy all over again because I need you to hear me because somebody's been praying the same prayer for an extended period of time. Somebody's been worried about the same thing for a long duration of time. Somebody's been wondering, was this thing ever going to turn around for you? Will your children ever get it together? Will your finances ever get fixed? And I came to tell you, he heard you. Be not weary in well-doing. The Bible says in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Hear me, woman. Hear me, man. He heard you. Your prayer has been heard. I said your prayer has been heard. I said your prayer has been heard. That God is still hearing and answering prayer. He's still listening when we pray. He still hears you when you make your request known unto him. Your prayer. Your prayer. Hear me. Your prayer has been heard. You, you, you're not going to spend too many, many more crying nights and sleepless nights. Your prayer has been heard. I don't know when he's going to show up, but hear me when I tell you, he heard you when you pray. Oh, glory to his high name. Glory to his high name. I'm trying to move on, MJ, but I, I feel something pushing me to stay right here for a minute. I get some resistance from this. I need you to hear me when I tell you that the devil in hell can't stop God from moving in your situation. When he hears you, he will do something about your circumstance. The Bible says, call on me and I will answer you. He heard you. Your prayer has been heard. Your prayer has been heard. But that's not all. He says that this place, this temple, has been hallowed. Yeah. This place has been hallowed. That when you come into this temple, this cathedral, this sanctuary, when you come into this house of the Lord, this is no ordinary place. That this house has been hallowed by the presence of the Lord. As a matter of fact, it's right there. In verse 12, God says, I have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. God says, this place you're hanging out in right now, this is no ordinary spot. I have chosen this place to put my name there, says the latter verses. I'm going to put my name there. Y'all know if you understand anything about the Hebraic understanding of name, it is synonymous with nature. Now, what you call something is the characteristics of that something or someone. And God says, I'm putting my name in that place. So whatever you call me, you will be able to experience from me when you come in that place. You call me provider? <laughs> I'll provide for you. You call me healer? I'll heal your mind, body, and soul. You call me way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Your God, that's who I am. I'll prove to you that I'll be everything you need me to be. Oh, is there anybody today who needs something from the Lord? I came to tell you, we've been praying that his name would be here, that his presence would be here, that his nature would be found here, and everything you need, God has it available to you. All right. He says, I'm putting my name there. I've chosen this place. So don't treat this place any kind of way. Don't you bring your water bottles in here and sit down and think you're just going to get entertained for 90 minutes. Don't you come in here, cross your legs, fold your arms, and say, move me, minister. No, I'm not here to move you. I'm here to remind you of who the great mover is. I'm not here to entertain you and thrill you. 
I'm here to tell you that the eternal God of the universe is still on his throne and there is nothing too hard for him. I need 10 people in here who can help me preach and testify. When I come up in here, I'm listening for a word from the Lord. When I come up in here, I'm listening to find out if God is going to do it today or next week or next year. I need to hear something from God that's going to shift my perspective, shift my mindset, and make me a better person tomorrow than I was yesterday. Your prayers have been heard, um, and this place has been hallowed. But can I close when I tell you that God likewise says right there in chapter 7, my people will be helped. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, my people will be helped. I, I read verse 12, and then I stopped abruptly um, because I didn't want to get to verse 13 and verse 14. I wanted to save that for right here. Because by the time you get through verse 13, you find that verse in verse 14 that ought to make you happy even if you got to get happy all by yourself. Because God is responding to the petition of Solomon from chapter 6. Solomon says, God, I want your eyes to be open and your ears to be attentive to everything your people pray in this place. And God says in latter verses, my eyes will be open, my ears will be attentive to the prayers that my people pray in this place. But verse 14... God says, listen here, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. He says, I'm going to be a helper for my people who think they don't have any help to be found. I'm going to prove to them that I can show up in the midst of their darkness and dismal circumstance and give them help that nobody else can provide. I wonder if I got any of God's people in this place today. Anybody in here who still believes that prayer changes things? Anybody in here who still believes that prayer works? Even if your money can't get you out of it, prayer can. Even if your best friend can't get you out of it, prayer can. I need to find some prayer warriors somewhere on, in the cathedral today who can help me testify to some disbeliever that prayer still changes things. And God says, if you call on me, I'm going to prove to you that I can heal this land. Now, child of God, I need some real prayer warriors now because they just announced this weekend that there's a new variant to this virus. It's called Omicron. But I need to find out if there's anybody who knows the omnipotent and know that the omnipotent is bigger than Omicron. I need to find somebody who knows the omnipresent one. And you know that the omnipresent one is available to you in the midst of Omicron. I need to find somebody who can testify. There's absolutely nothing too hard for God. And he says if his people would call on him, he will heal the land. Do you believe what your God says? Well, if you believe it, I need you to pray some break prayers because we've got some big needs in this place. And God says, whatever you need, I'm available to help you. Can I find three witnesses in here who found yourself with your backs up against the wall and you called on God and you found out he's a very present help even in the time of trouble. I need some old school saints now. I feel my old school pulling on me. Because the old school song would go like this. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. But there's no other help. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? Can I go older than that? Oh, God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast. And our eternal home. I need somebody who understands that God is available to meet your need, to help me celebrate the fact he helped me when I was down and out. He helped me when I thought I'd never bounce back. He helped me when I thought there was no hope for my situation. And you're a living, breathing testimony that he will help you in the midst of your crisis. He will help you when nobody else has the strength to do so. I need somebody to begin to testify because your pew partner may need to be encouraged because they think there's no help to be found. But as long as God is still on the throne, he's still able to do exceeding abundantly 
upon all we can ask or think. Can I find some witnesses here who found yourself broken, busted, but God stepped in. He paid your bills, took care of your family situation, took care of your work situation, and somebody today is still waiting on God to move in your situation. But can I give you some Bible for that? The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They're going to mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can I find somebody who's found him to be a present help in your time of trouble? God says, I'm going to help you. And then when he gets to verse 18, he says, as long as you do what I tell you to do, there will always be a king on this throne that's going to help in your situation. And I got to give you the bad news. Because there were some bad kings that came after Solomon. There were some good kings. But there were a lot of bad kings that came after Solomon. But on this first Sunday of Advent, can I give you some more good news? The, the Bible helps us to know that there's another king that came down through 40 and two generations. There's another king that was born in Bethlehem, raised up in Nazareth. There's another king who preached masterful sermons, who helped people to understand what the kingdom of God should look like. He provided miracles and he ensured that nobody stayed the same. He died one Friday afternoon, but he rose early one Sunday morning. And the Bible says that God had highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. I said he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. But he's not just Lord. I told you he's king. That's why in Magi, the Magi in Matthew chapter 2, they came looking for Jesus. And they said, where is he who was born king of the Jews? And I came to tell somebody, there may have been some bad kings. There may have been some bad presidents. We may have had some bad politicians. But I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. And is there anybody who knows he is king of kings? And he is Lord of Lords. He's the great I am. He's the physician of my soul. He's the bishop of my soul. He is able to do what nobody else can do. So please excuse me, but I feel like lifting him up. Please excuse me, but the old hymn writer said, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. I need somebody to help me crown him. I need somebody to help me crown him. I need somebody to help me lift him. Is there anybody in this church today who feels like lifting him up? Who feels like glorifying him? Who feels like magnifying him? I need somebody who knows my Jesus to testify. He's able to give you peace in a storm. He's able to rock you to sleep at night. He's able to stand up and speak peace to your storm tossed sea. He is Lord of Lords, but He is King of Kings, and He shall reign forever, 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 forever.
your turn. Do what you want to do. Let fire fall down. Let glory fill this house. Speak, Lord.
here to help us. He is here to hear us. This space is made holy and hallowed. So when we come onto these grounds, we will know we're in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Where, where are the folk who need some help right through here? You need some help? You have some situation, some situation, some situation. You need some help. It may not be everybody, but where are the folk who need a little help? Need a little help. Need a little help. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you that you promised to be with us, to be available to us. I thank you for your ever-present help in time of trouble. This Sunday afternoon, your sons and daughters all across this congregation, even all around the world who may be viewing us, need some help. And you promised that you would help us. You promised that you would hear us and help us. So we lay our requests at your feet. We lay our burdens on the altar. Let the fire fall. Let your glory fill this house so that we cannot go back the same way we came. So what affects us on this Sunday will still affect us on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. You said that your eyes would be open and your ears would be attentive to the prayers that we pray in this place. So we pray our prayers in faith, believing that if we cast our cares on you, we'll find out that you care for us. Thank you, oh God, that there is absolutely nothing that we need to withhold from you. We just need to verbalize our complaint, our concern, our cares. And I thank you that you've chosen to listen to us. I thank you that you've chosen to incline your ear unto us. I thank you that you choose to be present with us in every one of our situations. So, for your people around this church today who need you in a special way, will you show yourself mighty and strong? Show yourself to be our deliverer, our savior, our redeemer, our rescuer from the challenging times of this thing called life. If it be your will to keep the thorn in our flesh, I thank you today that you tell us in no uncertain terms that your grace is sufficient for us because your strength is perfected in our weakness and we bless your high name for that today we glorify you for that today we magnify you for that we exalt you great God and we bless you for hearing us when we pray meet your people at the points of their need will you please make this week to be a great week for us so that you might get the glory and all things will work together for our good. We trust you. We believe you. And we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do, what you've already done. In the strong name of the Lord Jesus, we pray with great thanksgiving and expectation. And all God's people said amen. I love the Lord.
church, upstairs, downstairs, around the world. I love the Lord. Sing, church. stand with me to extend the privilege of the church that is to allow some sister some brother to say yes to the one who's already said yes to you our great God of glory has given his one and only son Jesus Christ to be your savior to be your redeemer to get you back in relationship with God and on this Sunday afternoon if you do not have an abiding relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to come toward me right now move immediately move swiftly Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to get your life in relationship with your Lord. I see you moving, my dear sister. God bless you. God bless you as you walk this way. Encourage her, church. Encourage her. God bless you. Who else needs to come? Who else needs to make your way? Come on, come on, come on. If you're in the balcony, come on downstairs. Come on downstairs. The invitation is extended to you. The invitation is extended to you. I'll hasten to his throne. Man, woman, or child, whosoever will, let her, let him come. Hasten to his throne. If you're doing us around the world and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus or become a part of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, Email us at join at wheelerbc.org. Join at wheelerbc.org. Is there another who will come and join my sister? I'll hasten. I'll hasten. Is there another? You come in. Come on. Come on. We'll wait for you to get this way. Come on, sis. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Will you encourage her a little bit better than that? Come on. God bless you, man. God bless you. Is there another? Is there a third who'll come this, this Sunday afternoon? Is there a third who'll come this way? Is there a third? Where are you coming from? Where are you? Where are you? God bless you. Come on, sis. Come right on that way. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The three sisters are here. Is there another who needs to come? Is there another? God bless you. God bless you. We 
bless your name, God, for sending your daughters, for sending your daughters today. Is there another? Is there another? I haven't been able to ask you to ask this in about two years. But look towards somebody and ask them, is the pastor waiting on you? Is the pastor waiting on you? Ask them. If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say I'll walk with you. That aisle is long. I'll walk with you so you don't have to walk by yourself. Come on, sis. Come down that center aisle right there. Come down that center aisle. Praise the Lord for my four sisters. My four sisters. Is there another? Is there another? Come on down this way. I can't wait to be your pastor. I'd love to serve as your pastor. These folk around you would love to be your family of faith and fellowship. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Brother, are you here? Brother, you need to make it official today? Come on. I'm waiting on you. We want to encourage you. We want to celebrate with you. We want you to be a part of our family. Another sister? Come on. Today is the day of salvation. Help me thank God for these four sisters, will you? Hallelujah. Listen, my sisters, on behalf of this entire church family, I want each of the four of you to know how excited we are about the decision you've just made to become a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and a part of the body of Christ worldwide. On behalf of each one of us, I say to you, welcome to the avenue. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. These folk around you can't wait to be in relationship with you and in fellowship with you. We're excited about your future, excited about what the things God has in store for you. So, <laughs> welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We're glad you're our new members. God bless you, one and all. Hold on, Dr. Dr. Lisa. My sister just said, listen, Pastor, I'm already a member, and we don't do we don't usually come down the aisle if you're not if you're already a member. She said, I'm already a member. I just wanted everybody to know I've been clean and sober for a year, and I'm working on my attitude. Come on and thank God for clean and sober for one year. God bless you. God bless you. Come on and thank God for her. Come on, come on, celebrate, celebrate. God helped her. God helped her. the way to go home. That's the way to go home. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in. In your labor and in your leisure. In your joy and in your sorrow. In your laughter and likewise in your tears. Until that day when we meet the Lord face to face. And cry, holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Until that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace. Go in love. Go in joy. And may the very God of peace, love, and joy go with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please be seated until the ushers give us leadership. I'll hasten to his throne. Yes. 
Have a phenomenal week, my father's children. Have a phenomenal week. May the Lord be with you as you.